Many on the left have long mocked the assertion that critical race theory is being taught in schools. Despite the fact that David Flynn, a high school football coach in Massachusetts, just got sacked for objecting to the level of CRT and BLM propaganda being pushed on his daughter, or the tens of thousands of documented examples of critical race theory being taught at countless institutions. The way the left have justified such brazen dishonesty is because there's no subject called critical race theory on the curriculum, and there are no exams in critical race theory. So they loftily claim this means that it's not being taught. But this is a piece of specious sophistry that's utterly in denial of the facts and of mountains of evidence. Because critical race theory is being applied across the curriculum. Its tenets are taught in numerous subjects, at numerous times, in thousands of schools. So the left's claims are simply disingenuous lies. But they're not going to be able to lie about it anymore. Because the biggest teaching organisations in Britain and America, the National Education Union and the National Education Association, have both produced extensive reports which make explicit and abundantly clear their intent to place critical race theory at the very heart of the curriculum. To ensure that it saturates every aspect of the indoctrination and conditioning, um, I mean, the education of your child. But what exactly is critical race theory? Well, it's the belief, though it's stated as a fact, that racism is embedded in every system of society that all institutions are defined by the expression of racial power, so that in every situation you should not ask, is racism present? You should ask, how is racism manifested here? But if you're determined to see racism everywhere, then you will. It's a case of the tail wagging the dog. It's a grossly self-fulfilling prophecy that should be anathema to any academic or educationalist. And the fact that so many have fallen for this, let's be frank, utter drivel, is a deeply worrying sign of our times. And it goes without saying that it should be kept out of schools at all costs, which is why it's now virtually compulsory. Anti-racism is a clever term. It sounds like it means you're against racism. And who in their right mind wouldn't be that? But being anti-racist is different. It's about sniffing out systemic and cultural discrimination. It's a vague, endless and deeply ideological endeavour. Rooted in 1970s loony left anti-imperialistic thought. And in the theories of power of Michel Foucault. Now... It's true that American history is deeply scarred by racism. But it's also true that the story of that nation is one of continual improvement. Yet critical race theory is in complete denial of that. And its purveyors are in denial of the fact that it was the Democrats who were the most guilty of America's gravest sins. It was the Democrats who were the slavers the Democrats who fought to break the Confederacy away from the Union, the Democrats who imposed Jim Crow laws, the Democrats who founded the KKK, the Democrats who committed the worst massacres against the Indians, and the Democrats who now claim that the Republicans did all that, and that America's as racist as it ever was. Even as blacks have risen to all the highest offices in the land, and are among the most loved and respected figures in American history. Anyway, what do these new reports actually say? Well, America's NEA make clear that they intend to push critical race theory in schools, despite recent attempts to legislate against it. They claim that such moves are attempts to redline the realities of history 
to justify the harms of the present, while they seek to oppose what they perceive to be systems of oppression. Misty Crompton, one of the movers and shakers of this campaign, claims, with no trace of irony, that other forms of teaching are just propaganda. But her attempts to place identity, race and culture at the heart of the curriculum are obviously the direct opposite of that. She claims that systemic racism is simply the reality of history, despite the fact that she's a social science teacher with no background in history at all. Megan Tuttle also rails how their opponents are simply repugnant. The pandemic is laying bare systemic inequalities in education and in our most vulnerable communities. Stifling and penalising conversation and education on those inequalities and their sources is ignorant and does nothing to move us forward. The reality, of course, is that she seeks to impose her own distorted propaganda and will do everything she can to stifle and penalise conversation on her own manifesto. Brandon Morrison also seeks to overhaul the curriculum, despite being just a fifth grade teacher with no respectable achievements as a subject specialist. He too makes clear his ideological opposition to capitalism and his obsession with how racism, stolen land from indigenous people and laws and politics are the driving forces behind societal systems. He claims to be open-minded, but also sees America as simply defined by systems of oppression. Chantelle Bugs makes clear how critical race theory is at the heart of the project. She, perhaps unsurprisingly, specialises in a raft of specious subjects like race, racism, gender, feminist theory and queer theory. Again, revealing how radical activism rather than academic inquiry, is the driving force behind this endeavour. She is adamant that racial inequality is literally embedded into the law, workplace and other institutions. For all their protestations of open-minded tolerance, it's clear that their minds are all made up, and that students simply need to be drilled into accepting America's systemic racism. Kiara Kayla-Jones provides a striking example of the sort of meaningless word soup that really informs this movement. Having opportunities to grapple and reckon with this nation's history allows us to analyse how power imbalances perpetuate division and oppression so that we may dream a path forward towards a world rooted in justice, love and connection. To learn about, name and understand structural and systemic oppression threatens the status quo. Jones, a former model, is director of Unlock Your Story, and she describes herself as a storyteller. Her bio claims that her personal and professional work leverages storytelling and narrative power-building strategies for social change. And her evidence-free perspective anathema to any historian of merit, again shows that her work simply aims to prove the conclusion she's already decided on. It is, in someone's famous words, an inverted pyramid of piffle. This whole effort is even more worrying when we learn it's connected to the Zinn Education Project and Black Lives Matter. The former of those is named after Howard Zinn, an utterly discredited far-left activist who pushed gross propaganda disguised as history, distorting America's faults while whitewashing its accomplishments. Zinn falsely claimed that Columbus was a genocidal maniac. He painted the warring tribes of American Indians as feminist communist hippies, claimed all of America has been geared towards protecting the wealth of white men, argued that American GIs in World War II were the equivalent of Nazi war criminals, painted the Viet Cong as well-intentioned community leaders, and eulogised the murderous Black Panthers as saints of the civil rights movement. 
It sounds exactly like the level of history this project aims at. And Black Lives Matter, for their part, well, they're an anti-capitalist and anti-Semitic Maoist who caused incalculable damage while fleecing millions and enriching themselves. Yet these are the inspirations for a bunch of muddle-headed radical activists who hope to mould the teaching of history for a generation, despite not having a history degree between the bunch of them. Britain's NEU is equally clear about its determination to impose the ideology of anti-racism, and its blasé assumption that the so-called attainment gap is caused purely by systemic racism, utterly independent of any other factors. It also cites BLM as an inspiration, while suggesting that Covid was racist. It even takes inspiration from Lewis Hamilton, the muddle-headed Formula One champion who suggests climate change is caused by people who eat sausages, and certainly not people with fleets of luxury cars, private jets, yachts, energy-guzzling homes, and a lengthy career in the most carbon-heavy sport on planet Earth. Hamilton wants all schools and colleges to use the NEU's anti-racism framework, and 450,000 members have signed up to it, and it claims that every student is affected by racism. It makes clear its determination to place race inequality and cultural inclusion at the heart of the curriculum, while all blame is placed on white supremacy. There's no recognition of personal responsibility, or the role of culture, family, parental stability, or any one of a myriad of other pertinent factors. It too seeks to decolonize the curriculum, and will also focus on history and the legacy of the British Empire, but not, say, Islamic or Chinese empires. And this project will flagrantly lie about history too, using a distorted view of migration that makes clear its ideological slant to attack the supposed mythical and inaccurate view of immigration that has allowed migrants to be scapegoated by various politicians. Of course, its own mythical and inaccurate approach and the scapegoating of its opponents will be considered perfectly acceptable. For all their protestations of academic integrity and transparency, this is just another flagrant attempt to push divisive, activist lies on the most vulnerable members of society. Children. It's another attempt to create racism where it doesn't exist. And it does it through the most flagrant racism imaginable. By conjuring up the image of a satanic white supremacy that has toiled through the ages to subjugate all other races. And which still exerts a malevolent hold over all our institutions. It's the most ahistorical and dishonest approach imaginable and it will simply foster resentment and division. It's also based on a mountain of lies pushed by shamaters, radical activists with zero historical grounding, who still feel justified in dictating the largest and most complicated field of all, historical inquiry. It simply must be stopped. The only positive thing to come out of this campaign is that it will forever silence those who claim that critical race theory is not being taught in schools. Or it should at any rate. But as they are immune to reason and evidence, who knows how effective it will really be. If you'd like to support this channel, please like, subscribe and think about buying my books. They're called The Tyranny of the Left and they go into topics like this in much greater detail. They're available on the links below. Please do feel free to pick them up and let me know what you think. Thank you.